shine forth? Where is God enthroned? On the cherubim. So David writes in Psalm 9 and verse 11, Sing praise to the Lord who sits enthroned in Zion. Where's the Ark of the Covenant? In Zion. Tell among the peoples his deeds. You know, the scriptures invite us to boast about God. Do you know that? The scriptures invite us to boast about God. To testify about his goodness. Tell one generation to another of his deeds and his goodness. It says uh, Psalm 145. One generation will tell the next the goodness of God and his mighty deeds. You know, when we testify, it's an invitation for God to do the same thing again. I think David started to wake up to something. David set three courses of singers in place to praise and worship God on a 24-7 basis. He brought them in. And whose tabernacle is going to be restored? David's fallen tent. What were they doing in David's fallen tent? They were worshipping God. They were praising God 24-7. And you know what happened? David defeated all the enemies of Israel and got very rich and financed the building of the temple and set up Solomon to build the temple and to reign after he passed on. So what does it mean to enthrone? Well, the Oxford Dictionary says enthrone is to install a monarch or a bishop with due ceremony. I think there's some celebrations going on in England at the moment about a monarch who was enthroned some, I think, 70 years ago. Was it? 70 years ago, the monarch was enthroned. What, what happened when she got enthroned? Well, they had a big due celebration, but she was given power and authority to rule her domain. Is that right? So when we enthrone the Lord of hosts, we give him power and authority to rule our domain. Okay? And that's what I've said there. Isaiah 37 and verse 15 to 16, the situation here was the Assyrians had come to attack Judah. And there's too many of them. They just outnumbered the, the men of Israel, the men of Judah. And they were against, if God didn't intervene, they were dead men. Okay? If God didn't intervene, they were going to wipe them out. So Hezekiah goes to the Lord and prays, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, enthroned above the cherubim. There it is again. This is sometime after David. You are the God, you alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth, you have made heaven and earth. So what happened? Well, Hezekiah went and worshipped God and said, you're God. That's worship, isn't it? You're God. You made heaven and earth. I'll praise you for that. But if you don't do something, we're dead. And we're your people. So God said to Hezekiah, it's okay, I've got, I got your back. I've got it. You won't even have to fight in this battle. They went out in the morning and 185,000 Assyrians had died overnight because the angel of the Lord went through the Assyrian camp. And the king of Assyria packed up his, the rest of his army and left and went home and didn't come back again. Psalm 22 and verse 3 says, you, Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. 
this is Asaph, one of the leaders of one of the groups of musicians and singers that praised in the temple. And he saw what happened, that when they praised, God got enthroned upon their praises. And that released God's power and authority to work in their behalf. Then we go to Second Chronicles and we find King Jehoshaphat. And it says here in verse 1, After this, the Moabites and the Amorites and with them some of the Menuites came against Jehoshaphat for battle. Well, what happened was that they were coming across and, the, and some of the people of Judah saw them amassing on the border. And they rushed to tell Jehoshaphat, the Amorites and the Moabites and some of the Menuites, they're at the border, they're going to attack. And there's hordes of them there. They're, they're, they so outnumber us it doesn't matter we are facing a situation that if you do not if God does not intervene they're dead or they're going to slavery so verse 12 Jehoshaphat prays and says oh God oh our God will you not execute judgment on them for we are powerless against this great horde that is coming against us we do not know what to do but our eyes are on you our eyes are on you That's, there's some good advice in that verse confess Lord unless you intervene I'm done for. But my eye is on you. Keep your eye on him. Verse 13. Meanwhile, all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones and their wives and their children. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benael, son of Jeel, son of Matanus, Tanai, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, in the midst of the assembly. Why did God give his lineage? Why is his lineage there? Because he's a son of a prophet. Remember Zechariah? Prophet Zechariah. He's, he's a priest. He's, a, he's one of the descendants of Asaph who was one of the leaders of the groups that praised the Lord because God is giving them a message that's unbelievable and they have to have someone they can trust to receive this message from. Okay? So he says, Tomorrow go down against them. Behold, they will come up by the ascent of Siz. You will find them at the end of the valley, east of the wilderness of Juriel. You will not need to fight in this battle. I like that. You will not need to fight in this battle. Stand firm, hold your position and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf. Sounds a bit like Ephesians 6. Stand still and see the salvation of God. O Judah and Jerusalem, do not be afraid and do not be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you. It doesn't say that there but that's what it means. Tomorrow go out against them and the Lord will be with you. I mean, they have faced the reality of their condition. It's not sugar-coated in any way. God, if you don't intervene, we are dead or we're going into slavery. You see, 
the Moabites and Amorites and the men of Mount Seir, they um, looked at uh, the land of Judah because of being blessed by God with envy. And they said, they're just a small people. We'll, we'll get together and we'll go and take their country off them. Well, God had other ideas. Verse 20. And they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Turkia. And when they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you will be established. Believe his prophets, and you will succeed. Something you've got to do. You've got to believe. First, you've got to believe. And when he had taken counsel with the people, he appointed those who were to sing and to, to the Lord and praise him in holy attire as they went before the army and say, Give thanks to the Lord for his steadfast love endures forever. What a stupid idea, putting um, singers out in front of the army. There's a great horde coming. They're, 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 and you put singers out in front of them, unarmed. They're just going to go out there and sing. Why am I, why am I emphasizing this? Because when we're fighting the battle, we have to praise him. We have to praise him. They face the reality of what they are facing. But they had to praise him. And what does it say here? As I went out before the army and say, Give thanks to the Lord for his steadfast love endures forever. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set an ambush. When did he set the ambush? when they began to sing and praise. The Lord set an ambush against the men of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah so that they were routed. For the men of Ammon and Moab rose up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, devoting them to destruction. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they also helped to destroy one another. The battle's not yours, it's the Lord's. They went, they went mad. Crazy. Can you imagine? There must have been some, some tension between Mount Seir and the other two groups. And someone said something wrong and the other one running through with the sword and then it was on. You've seen those barroom fights? Everybody joins in. They don't know what they're doing. They went crazy. And when Judah came to the watchtower of the wilderness they looked towards the horde and behold there were dead bodies lying on the ground none had escaped they must have reporters because it goes on to say that none of the nations around about them ever came against them because they saw that God fought for them. They saw what happened and said, we're not going anywhere near them. When Jehoshaphat and, the, and his people came to take their spoil, 
they found among them in great number goods, clothing and precious things which they took for themselves until they could carry no more. They were three days in taking the spoil. It was so much. You know what happens? When you go through the battle, God blesses you. That's what happened. The very thing that tried to destroy them was a source of blessing. So we've been looking at this on the study on Wednesday. Been looking at how many times it says pray with thanksgiving. Because Paul knows the same thing. He knows we need to give thanks. What did they say? Where is it? Give thanks to the Lord for his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks. See? Give thanks. You know what? When we praise it in him, that, him in that situation it is a sacrifice of praise. Because it seems, Lord, get me out of this situation. And God says, praise me in this situation. Proverbs 3 verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Don't try and work it out. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. And it goes on to say, And he will bring health to your bones, to your body. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Stay in touch with God. Prayer is an audience with the King. Stay in His presence. Don't seek to get out of His presence. Stay in His presence. Give thanks in all circumstances. All circumstances. I mean, it's easy in the good circumstances to praise God. But there are some circumstances you find yourselves in it's not easy to praise God. When you're feeling lousy, when everything seems to come against you, God says, praise me. Give thanks. For this is the will of God concerning you. Really? Really? Yeah. See the children of Israel, Judah, they looked at the situation, the situation was dire. And they said, Our God is bigger than any situation. So I'm not going to go and beg him to get me out of this situation as such. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to keep my eye on him. Because he can deliver me. Will he? Most times, yeah. Sometimes, no. Not immediately. And that's the challenge. That's when you've got to be steadfast. That's when you've got to have patience. Long suffering. That song we sang, I raise a hallelujah. It was written because a two-year-old girl, was it? Girl? I think it was. Boy, was it? Was in hospital and getting worse and worse and worse. And it seemed like there was no hope. So they rang back to the church and and one of the guys wrote this song and they started singing this song I raise a hallelujah in the middle of the mystery I raise a hallelujah 
my God will fight for me. I raise a hallelujah when I don't understand. I'll still praise God. Because sometimes we get into situations and we cry to God to save us and get us out of the situation. Get, we don't like this situation. Get me out of it. Well, think about Job. The devil couldn't touch Job unless God allowed it. Never liked the book of Job. His friends, his encouragers, weren't exactly encouragers. You must have done something wrong. What did you do? Confess what you did wrong. And Job says, I don't know that I've done anything wrong. His wife says, curse God and die. But the end of the story is that Job got blessed like this story of the spoil God blessed him gave him double everything he had so what is God's message to us today trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths Romans 8, 28. For I know that all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Having done all to stand, then sometimes you just got to stand. Nothing else to do. I'll just stand. And trust God. It's easy to say when things are going right. It's not easy to say when things are not so good. But we have to make up our mind before we get to those situations that that is what we'll do. Lord, I will praise you even if I die. I will still praise you. I will praise you for you are good. And your mercy endures forever. I'll praise you in the midst of the storm. I'll raise a hallelujah in the midst of the battle. Because I know my God is a God of justice, full of mercy, full of grace. So God says, I'm releasing a new anointing today. Do you want it? And he won't force it on you. I'm releasing a new anointing. Increasing the anointing. The anointing is a deeper awe of God to bring us into a deeper relationship and a deeper reverence for God, a deeper respect for him, to bring us into the knowledge of our God. Because when we know him better, we'll stand in awe of him. When we build a throne and we see, uh, Lord, remind me about a book I read 50 years ago. Some of you read it, Prison to Praise by Merlin Carruthers. And in that book, he started telling people, praise God for your situation. And God was just releasing people out of their situation in no time at all, in, in hours or days, one after the other. And I think that we need to take notice instead of coming and panicking like you know when the disciples were in the boat and the storm came up remember that 
Jesus said, we're going across the other side. Jesus went to sleep in the bottom of the boat and they came to him. The storm came up and the, the boat was sinking. Their lives were in danger. They come to him and said, don't you care that we're perishing? And Jesus got up and spoke to the storm and said, peace be still. You can't release peace on the storm unless you've got peace. And it's the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. And you'll get that peace as you build a throne. What did Jesus say to him? Boys, you did the right thing. I'm your man. No, he didn't say that. Not quite. He said, what happened to your faith? Where'd your faith go? Oh, you have little faith. Because if we panic and we say, God, get me out of this situation, we're saying, God, you don't know what you're doing. Is that right? God, I trust you. I trust you. In the middle of the storm, I trust you. Because you can get up and say, peace, be still. And it has to obey you. I know who you are. You're the Lord of hosts, enthroned on the praises of your people. And when we give him praise, it releases his power and authority to work in our lives. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're going to sing that song, I Raise a Hallelujah.